Good morning, everybody. Do come and take a seat. Great to have you with us this Pentecost Sunday. Uh, my name's Steve Short, I'm curate here, and uh, our vicar Dan will be preaching for us a little bit later on. And in particular, welcome to you if you are a visitor or new to us today. It's always great to welcome visitors. Uh, do stick around afterwards for a cup of tea or coffee and get to know us a little bit. Uh, today is a, an all-age family communion service. We have the great joy of all staying together in, in the church throughout our whole time and sharing the Lord's Supper together, which is always uh, a privilege and a joy. Um, just to say, given that we're all here together, uh, we sometimes expect younger ones to make a little bit of noise. Occasionally older ones make a little bit of noise, you never know. Um, and, and we don't mind that, we're, we're very happy with that. All of our young ones, as well as our old ones, are a welcome part of our church family. So if during the service I say we're now going to have a moment of quiet, that doesn't mean I expect you to throttle your children to make them silent if they're very young. Um, just I want you to feel comfortable in every way. Well, today is uh, Pentecost Sunday. I don't know if you knew that. It's the day when we uh, remember in the church the time that the Holy Spirit was given to us. You can perhaps see the, the, the image on the screen there, where often in the Bible the Holy Spirit is represented as coming in fire, but also as a dove. And he came, just as one or two examples, to be our guide, to help us in prayer, to help us to understand God's Word, and to help us live our lives faithfully as lovers and servers of the Lord Jesus. And as we come to our first prayer, the prayer of preparation, our prayer reminds us that he cleanses our hearts. He helps us to perfectly love God and to praise God. So do please join with me in this prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, before we come to our first hymn, I'd like to uh, just say something about the little card that you were given and hopefully a pen that you might have been given as you came in. We're going to be thinking a lot today about prayer during our service, and uh, there's a whole number of reasons why we might pray, uh, some of which we'll, we'll probably come to as our service progresses. But one of the things I wanted to mention right at the beginning is, as it says on the slide, we can talk to God just like we talk to other people. Sometimes people think prayer is for people like me who've had their collar turned backwards or stand at the front. But actually, we can just chat to God conversationally at any time during the day. We can speak to him like we speak to other people. So we don't need big, long, fancy prayers. We can have short prayers. Now, the card that you were given as you came in, I'm just going to give you a minute or two to think about something that you'd like to pray for. I'm going to invite you to write down a really short prayer, if you would like to. If you would like to. Write down a really short prayer, which the stewards will then collect, and some of those prayers will be read out, I think, by some of our younger people when Jackie leads our prayers later on in the service. So if you don't have a card, or if you don't have a pen, do wave a hand, and our stewards will wonderfully produce one for you to write with. We're going to need some right down the front here, stewards, so you've got a long journey to go. So do, if you would like to, just write down something as a prayer.
Okay. Remembering that prayers can be short, you've just got about half a minute left. Um, when you're ready, why don't you um, wave your hand in the air? Or pa I'll tell you what, I've got an idea, I've just thought of this. Pass your cards along towards the centre aisle, and then if you've got cards in your hand, give, them a, give a wave and the stewards will come and pick them up from you. Well done, everybody. Any more for any more? <coughs> Super. If you're still praying, uh, if you're still writing your prayers, I suppose pray. Um, as we sing our first hymn, you can wave and a steward, I'm sure, will come and grab one from you. And uh, perhaps we could leave those on the font for the moment, and Jackie can pick them up from there as uh, she comes to lead our prayers later on. And we can use those prayers as well on other occasions, perhaps later in the week at Parish Prayer. More on that later. Well, we can pray uh, and talk to God about lots of things. One of the things that we can do is we can praise God, which in many ways is praying, isn't it? Out loud, praising God for who he is. And praising him for what a great joy it is, perhaps, for be, to be here today, to celebrate the Lord's Supper together. But you know, one of the things that we look forward to is even greater joy than we have at the moment as people who love the Lord Jesus. And towards the end of our hymn, we're going to be singing, but purer and higher and greater will be our wonder and our gladness when Jesus we see, when we're with him face to face. Until that day, as we celebrate on this Pentecost Sunday, we have the Holy Spirit to help us keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. So we're going to sing our first hymn, To God Be the Glory, Great Things He Has Done. <laughs>
Our Father God, we thank you for the great things that you have done. And Lord, as we explore those great things in your word today, please would you help us keep our ears open and our eyes fixed on Jesus. In his name. Amen. Amen. Well, do take a seat, and Dan is going to introduce the Bible reading for us. screen. Jesus is our great high priest. Can we say that together? Jesus is our great high priest. And I wanted to start by telling you about Peter and Karina. Now they're very good friends, the best of friends as you can tell, uh, for years. But a few weeks ago at school they had a big argument. A big argument. Um, who came up with the idea of building that den in the, in, in, the, in the back, back of the school? Of the school. Um, um, in, in, the, in the bushes, bushes around around the back. Back. Who had the idea? It was me. No, it was me. And they, and they argued, argued about whose, whose idea, idea it was, and then they argued about who they, who they should, should allow to come to, come to their, their den. den. Sounds, Sounds familiar, familiar doesn't, doesn't it? it? Is it just, Is it just me? me? <laughs> they, they argued, argued about, about who they should invite. And then, and then in, in anger, anger Karina, Karina pushed, pushed over Peter's, Peter's side, side of the, of the den, den, all the, all the stuff, stuff that he had built. built. And, now and now they, they weren't talking, talking to each other. other. In, fact, in fact, Peter, Peter wouldn't even let Karina, Karina anywhere near, near him. him. And, it and it was really sad because, because they'd, they'd been the best of friends. friends. Someone had come along, along didn't they? And, and bring them back together again, didn't they? Well, wonderfully, they both had a friend called Maisie. There she, there she is. is. Maisie. Maisie. And, and she, she knew them both very well. well. She, she went, went to Peter, Peter and, she and she talked, talked to, Peter to Peter for a very long time. How, How actually, actually Karina wasn't that bad. bad. It, was it was just one, one of those bad mistakes. mistakes. And, that and that Karina really, really wanted to be his friend, friend again. again. Well, as, well, as Maisie spoke, spoke Peter's, Peter's heart began to warm and, and see Karina's side of it. So Maisie, so Maisie asked for permission if she, if she could go and fetch, fetch Karina and bring, and bring her, her to Peter. Peter. And, and Peter, Peter said, yes. He said, he said yes. yes. Thank goodness, goodness for that. that. And so, and so Maisie, Maisie did, did that. that. And soon they were, they were all talking, talking again. again. Peter, Peter and Karina were good, good friends. friends. So, who so who was, was the really important person in that story? story? Who was the really, really important person, person if you were listening? listening. Maisie. Maisie. Thank, Thank you, Patrick. Patrick. Maisie. Today, Today we're, we're thinking about Jesus in a very similar, a little bit similar, thing, thing to what Maisie does, does for, us. for us. You see, you back, see, back in, in the olden days, days when, the when the most important person in the country was a, was a king or a queen, or a queen it, was it was really hard to get to see, see them. them. Oh, sorry, oh, sorry that's, that's the wrong picture. picture. Uh, can we pan out a bit? There we go. Right. If you wanted to speak to a king, you'd have to go right to the right, to the right sort, of sort of people and give permission, permission and they, and they would have to bring, bring you to see the king, the king into, into the king's, king's throne room. room. But, what but what about God? God? How, do How do we get, get to see him? him? How, do How do we get, get into God's throne room? room? Well, well, that's, that's the, the biggest question ever, isn't it? Where, Where is God? Can I be close to him? Can I be near to him? Well, in the Old Testament, God gave to his people a bunch of people called priests. Um, it, was it was a way, a, way, a system, system for, getting for getting closer, closer to, to him. him. So, so it all centered around, around this person, the priest, the high priest. The high priest. He, was he was very important. important. He, belonged he belonged to the tribe of Levi. Of Levi. He, would he would represent, represent the people before God, God like, like Maisie. And, and he, he would represent, represent God before, before the people. He would teach the people. He would bring God to the people. So here's a bit of a go-between. You see, you see, God, God is utterly, utterly holy. We can't, we can't just walk up to God. God. Um, he's, he's very holy. We needed someone, a priest, to bring, to bring us to God, to God in, the in the Old Testament. Testament. And, and once, once a year, on the, on the Day, Day of Atonement, atonement see, this see this picture here? here? The, the priest, priest would 
go, go past, past the sight of people, people. He, would he would go, go into, into the, the Holy, Holy of Holies, where, where no one, one could see, see him, him and, and he would make there a sacrifice. Using, using the blood, blood of an animal, animal he, would he would sprinkle it on the holy table, and that, and that would represent... I'm still here, by the way. <laughs> but you but wouldn't you see, see the priest, priest all right? You wouldn't, you wouldn't see, the, see priest. the priest. And it would represent um, the, sins the sins of the people as the blood was put on the altar. And so, and so God, God would see the blood, the blood and, and he, he would forgive, forgive the people. The animal dies for the sins of the people. But the, but the thing is, is before the, the priest entered that holy place, place um, they, they had to clean themselves, themselves because, because they were sinners, sinners just like all the people. They were, they were just ordinary people. people. And, so and so they, they had, had to get dressed, dressed into all sorts of important clothes. clothes. So, so could I have a volunteer, please? please? Oh, too oh, many. many. Um, Ruben, Ruben, do you mind? Do you mind? Sorry about drinking. You could you be could the priest dresser. Do you want to help me dress the priest? They probably, they probably did, did have a dress up, by the way. Right, right. <laughs> my liege. Okay, okay. So, so there's, there's the priestly, priestly cloak. cloak. By the way, by the way this, this is just not, not quite, quite a priest, priest of war, but um, we're, kind we're kind of, of you know, artistic, artistic license. license. Well, well done. done. Oh, oh, you know, you priest, I forgot, I forgot to tell you, tell you high, high priest. priest. You've got to you clean yourself. Have you had a bath this morning? So basically, so basically, you've got to have, have a really, really good old thorough, thorough clean. clean. You know, you know everything, everything, top, top to bottom, bottom everything spotless, all right? right? So we'll, so just, we'll wait just wait here. here. <laughs> uh, Sorry, right, we won't do that now. Right, and, right, and you had a special waist, waist jacket. jacket. Um, um, why don't you put the sort of scarf, scarf around his neck? Um, um, priestly, priestly assistant. assistant. Great, great. Right, that'll do. Just hang it down, that's fine. Because it used to hang down. Okay, yeah, you Right, right. See, they, See, they needed, needed a rope because, because if they, if they entered, entered in an unholy way, way they, could, they could drag the priest, the priest out because he was going to drop down dead. dead. And you also, also have a bell, but I didn't bring a bell. A bell. Um, in case, case, so they'd so hear if you fell down. down. They'd go ding, ding, and they'd pull you out. Thank you, Patrick. Is it short enough? Right. Right. We're getting there. Good. Good. Brilliant. So you look really smart, by the way. Don't look in the mirror. And, and what, what you, you do, do, the priest goes beyond the curtain. The curtain. So, so, come on, come on Reuben. Can you go to the Holy of Holies, please? There's, There's the, the knife for the ball. You've got to sacrifice, sacrifice the ball, the ball there. Thank you. Thank you. And, and off he went. he went. Can you remind, Can you remind me he's there, there, by the way? <laughs> um, um. <laughs> <laughs> So no, so no one's allowed in there, ever, 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 ever. Uh, except, uh, except the priest once a year to make the sacrifice for the, for the sins. sins. But, did, but did, did he notice he already had, had to make a sacrifice for his own sins, sins in, order in order to do that? that. But, the but the people were very grateful. grateful. God, God had made, made it possible for them to approach him, him to worship him. Not, not just, uh, but, but it was only for a short time every year. A few hours, perhaps, maybe two hours. In the Holy of Holies. And, and he, would he would make that, make that sacrifice, sacrifice for, their for their sins. sins. Well, today, well, today we're, we're going to be finding out about Jesus as the perfect high priest who gave, who gave up, up the glory of heaven to become, to become a man and come, and come to us in order to, order to do amazing, to bring, to bring us back to God. To God. That's, That's what the Christian gospel is all about. So, so um, I'm, I'm going to hand over to Steve, Steve and I'm going to rescue Reuben from the Holy of Holies. You're not dead. Brilliant. Come out. Very, Very good. good. Right, if you go, go stay, stay, stay John, 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 come over, come over here. here. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, Dan's, well, Dan's handed over to me. I'm actually going to hand over to Fred, who's, who's going to come up now and read to us from Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter four. So, so grab, grab a Bible and you, you can follow, follow along. This morning's, this morning's Bible, Bible reading is taken from the book, from book of Hebrews, Hebrews, chapter 4, verses 14 to 16. And the Bible can be found in the chair in front of you. Hebrews 
Therefore, since we have a high priest who has gone through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith that we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet was without sin. Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. This is the word of God. Well, we said we're going to be thinking a bit about prayer during this morning, and uh, here's another picture about prayer. Do you know the wonderful thing is that when we pray, we're not speaking empty words into space. God hears when we pray. And we see that Bible verse there, I love the Lord because he hears my voice and my prayer for mercy. It's wonderful, isn't it, to be able to pray to our Father God. And we're going to do that now, but we're going to do it in song. And uh, we're going to uh, pray that the Lord's word would come alive in us as it is preached and as it has just been read. And we'll see these words, cause your word to come alive in me. Give me faith for what I cannot see. Holy Spirit, breathe new life in me. So it is a prayer. I'm nevertheless going to invite you to stand. Give your legs a stretch. So let's stand as the music begins and sing this prayerfully.
Do you take a seat? Isn't that wonderful to sing those words on Pentecost Sunday? The role of the Holy Spirit at work in our hearts. And that's our prayer as we open the scriptures now on, in Hebrews chapter 4. And um, I wanted to start by saying that life is full of ups and downs, isn't it? Um, ups and downs, happy times, sad times, um, sometimes very sad times. And there are sunny days like today, and there are slightly more gloomy days like we've been having more recently. There are fun parks, woohoo! Yes, and holidays. But there's also sickness and tiring things that make us really tired, and sometimes we want to just give up. And we can find work really tough, we can find school difficult, and sometimes confusing and ugly. And home life can be hard as well. Well, what's more, God, we sometimes feel that God is far, far away. And it's a real effort to love him and to serve him, let alone tell others about him. Um, there are times when we just don't come to him and say sorry for our sins, for the things we've done wrong. We find it hard in our hearts to forgive other people, like Peter and Karina. And we can stop praying. Well, this morning, the writer wants to encourage us, the writer of Hebrews, he's writing to struggling Christians who are really, really are feeling a, a distant from God. And the first thing he wants to tell them is that Jesus is our great high priest. Come on, folks. Jesus, our great, great high priest. And that's the truth that keeps us going in our Christian lives. We have a great high priest. Now, imagine you're on a cross-country run, those really long runs that they make you do at school. Um, have you ever done one of those? You, maybe you're a bit young. Some of, them, some of you have. I know that. Um, have you ever given up on one? Stop running? <laughs> I did. What about piano lessons? Having to go to Mrs. Miggins every Tuesday afternoon after school. <laughs> did you give up on that? Yeah, yeah, piano lessons, violin lessons, cello lessons, art, no, we don't, anyway, maybe you just give up on stuff when it's really hard, and it's true, life can be full of hard things, and we want to give up, and sometimes we want to give up as Christians, as followers of Jesus, and we need to remember, once again, that Christian life is a marathon, a cross-country run, rather than a, a hundred-yard dash. But it's a cross-country run that ha has banners all the way through it saying, keep going, you have a great high priest. Can someone shout that for me? Who's got a loud voice? One, two, three. Keep going, you have a great high priest. You could all say it, that'd be fantastic. Keep going, you have a great high Imagine you're running along and oh, going, and you hear this voice saying, keep going. You have a great high priest. Well, that's what the writer's doing. He's calling out to them. Now, we, we've learned, haven't we, what a high priest is in the Old Testament. So if you weren't over the page in chapter 5 of Hebrews, um, we have a job description. And I don't want to do a spoiler for next week. But um, we read there that the high priest was appointed by God. See, you don't apply for the job. You don't go, oh, I could be quite a good high priest. <laughs> No, you are appointed. God calls you out. You're from the tribe of Levi. Then the high priest deals with sin. So as we found out, they go behind and make that sacrifice for sin. But also, they strengthen the weak. So during the year, they're wandering around and they're normal people. They can strengthen you. How's it going, Patrick? How are you? Yeah, good. How's your prayer life? Do you want to talk about it? No, of course you don't. Not in public. But, <laughs> but they would help us. They would encourage um, the, the people. Because the people would listen to them because they were a sinner just like them. Just a normal person. So the priest was like a coach. Keep going. I can help you. Uh, calling from the side of the race. Actually, he's in the race as well. Um, he's in the race. That's why I put him on the green there. In our Bible reading, verse 14 of chapter 4, we read that Jesus is the Son of God. He's the Son of God. So God has sent us a perfect high priest. 
the perfect high priest. So we'll never give up on the Christian life. That's why he's written the book. He wants to encourage us, don't give up. Jesus, the Son of God, is your great high priest. So, we're going to learn, firstly, that the, Jesus is the best high priest. The best high priest. There we go, because he's done those things perfectly. He's fulfilling that job of appointed by God. This is my son whom I love. Do you remember that at his baptism? To deal with sin, and we'll get to that, and strengthen the weak. There's no one like Jesus. No one can come close to Jesus. And the first readers of this book, there they were from Israel, and they have been part of the covenant people of God, and wonderfully they've become Christians. They realize that Jesus was their Messiah, the true Son of God who had come to rescue them. And they've begun to follow Jesus, but now things have got tough, as I said. And they were tempted to go back to their old religion, back to the Old Testament. And the writer is saying, why would you want to go back to the old things? Why would you want to go back to the temple in Jerusalem? Because there, it's only one day in the whole of the year, once, that the priest can go and enter the holy place and make sacrifices for the sins of the people. Once a year. But look at Jesus. Look at Jesus, verse 14. He is the best high priest. He offers forgiveness of sins in a way that's far more superior. Because he doesn't go to the temple, a building in Jerusalem once a year, Where's he gone? It says it in verse 14. Anyone got the Bible open? The heavens. heavens. He's in the heavens. He's in the highest place, the temple of God, and the, the, the permanent holy place of God, the throne room of God himself. So the temple is just a copy of that. It's just a little picture of what's going on in heaven. More than that... What about the blood that Jesus uses for the forgiveness of sins? It's not just a bull from an animal, but it's his own blood, his precious blood, once and for all, for our forgiveness. So there's no repeat needed, it's his own blood. We never have to have a sacrifice again. Why would you want to go back to this old, antiquated system of forgiveness for a short-term and by a a human, by uh, the blood of a bull. Right, does anyone remember this? Who remembers having baby food? Who remembers having baby food? (laughs) You're a baby, how would you remember? (laughs) There's one or two that might still be eating it. So there's one or two little ones. Are you eating baby? Is it nice? Yes. Well, there will come a time, Miriam, when you might turn your nose up to baby food. Um, You know, we all enjoyed it, I'm sure, when we were babies. But it's not something that we repeat now, is it, as adults? We don't go back to eating mushy food, I hope. Um, We expect decent meals like shepherd's pie and vegetable lasagna and chips. Chips. Gravy. Yes. Mmm. Homer Simpson face, donuts, all that kind of thing. We don't want to go back to, what if you went home for Sunday lunch and your parents served up baby mush? Would you be impressed? One of our dads is nodding. Anyway, try and be helpful. We would turn up our nose at it and say, excuse me, where are the sausages? All right? We don't want to go back to that. And that's a tiny bit like this. Why would we go back to this system when Jesus has gone to the heavenly place and made the perfect sacrifice for sins? He's the perfect high priest. Don't go back, says the writer to uh, these early Christians. So not just that. That's an encouragement, isn't it? But also, um, actually, when adults, when we're, um, sometimes, I don't know if you're anything like me, but we look back at the times before we were a Christian and think, oh, I used to really enjoy doing that. Or, oh, wish, mm, that was fun. I, it's not quite right, but I really enjoyed, mm, yes, I enjoyed that. Well, it's the same sort of idea. Because you have to say to yourself, do those things offer me forgiveness? Do they help my relationship with God? Well, they don't, do they? So come back to Jesus. So that's encouragement number one. 
Jesus is our high priest. The second one is that Jesus is one of us. He's one of us. He's a great high priest, the very, very best in every way. And yet he became like you and like me. And verse 15 in our Bible readings teaches us that Jesus can sympathize with us. So when you're feeling tired, Sophie, Jesus can say, I know what that feels like because I got tired. In fact, I fell asleep in a boat. And remember, the high priest in the Old Testament was able to represent the people to God. He'd go into the holy place and say, look, I'm here for the sins of the people. I'm here to talk to you about the people. And the people thought, that's great because he's one of us. But Jesus is the same. He goes, I'm in the heavenly places, and I'm one of you. He became fully man, and he's fully man today, as well as being fully God. He's able to represent us. Jesus is one of us. A long time ago, I had a friend, and her dad was, uh, she was a very good friend, and her dad was super famous at the time. But I never really got to see him much, because he was always being super famous elsewhere. Very busy man. But one day, I, was going to, I went to visit my friend, um, and she said, he'll be there too, so you'll get to meet him, uh, have a good chat. And I went, I was quite scared about that, didn't really want to do that. It was, I was a bit sort of awestruck. Anyway, I arrived at her flat, and there he was, sitting cross-legged on the floor, because there was not enough furniture. It's a student flat. <laughs> So I sat down with him, and we chatted. And sitting cross-legged with this famous guy, it just made me feel, well, he's one of us. He's, he's like me. And I totally relaxed. And I was able to chat to him and get to know him better. And in a small way, that's a bit like Jesus. He understands us. He walks alongside us. He encourages us, as we've been singing. And we can keep going in our Christian faith, knowing that he's even been tempted like we are tempted. Because we're often tempted to sin, aren't we? We're often tempted to sin. And Jesus knows just what that's like. Because he was made weak. And um, I know what you're thinking, by the way. No way was Jesus ever tempted like I'm tempted. I mean, there's no internet now. Uh, there was no internet in his day. Um, there was no pizza hut next to his home. You know, he never faced the sort of things I was facing. But actually, yes, the same themes are true, that he was tempted to comfort himself and, and to fill his stomach in a way that was unhelpful. He was tempted to put his trust in other things and not his heavenly father. He was tempted to take the easy route, like when he was dying on the cross. Remember they said, come down from the cross if you are who you say you are. Well, he would have been tempted to do that. And yet, he never gave in. So the temptation just grew and grew and grew. When we're tempted, and when we, we often give in, and so the temptation goes, but we are sin. But Jesus never gave in, and the temptation was so great. So Jesus knows how we feel. He's one of us. And that's great to know. It's great to have people, isn't it, that when we suffer something really bad, that we meet a Christian who's suffered the same thing. And he, they come and care for us, and... And they know what it's like, and they show us how they got through it. If I'm walking down, a, I'm a bit scared. Do you like going down dark alleys on your own? No, nor do I. But isn't it nice that there's someone there who's been down that dark alley before? And they say, well, I'm a bit scared too, but I'll walk with you. I've been down there. It's okay. So off we go. And you go down the dark alley with them. Well, Jesus is the same. He's one of us. He can talk to us, comfort us, and get us through it. So he's our best high priest. He's one of us. And finally, he brings us to God. Verse 16, let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence. Remember Maisie? Remember Maisie? She grabbed her friend. Come on, we're going to go and see Peter, and we're going to sort this out. Well, it was all sorted. Well, Jesus brings us to the, the holy place. Not that building in Jerusalem, but the heavenly places. He takes us to the throne room of God because he's paid for our sins on the cross. He's died for those, so we can approach with boldness. So I've written this little ditty for us. Um, I was going to turn it into a song, actually. There's a few verses of this. I got carried away. 
Jesus, our greatest, highest priest, the heavenly Son of God, he came and died and rose again to be our priestly Lord. Shall we say that together? Jesus, our greatest, highest priest, the heavenly Son of God, he came and died and rose again to be our priestly Lord. And what that means is that we can, what the verse for 16 says, we can come into the holy presence of the Lord, even today. And Steve was talking about prayer, wasn't he? And um, we can come and ask for anything. Big stuff and the small stuff. Do you pray? Do you pray at home? Do you talk to God? Yes. Yeah, good. If you don't, try it. Because of Jesus, when we trust in his blood, we come into the most holy place. We can confidently come into his throne room and talk to him to pray. And so, if you look on the screen, the next few um, bits and bobs, I think I put some slides up about prayer. Ask your Heavenly Father, because we can now. We don't have to rely on someone else. You and I can go to the throne room of God. Next slide. We can talk to God like we talk to other people. Next slide. We can praise God for who he is. I will praise the Lord at all times to his face because of Jesus. Next slide. We can confess what we've done. I'm so sorry for what I've done. And next slide. We can tell God that we need him. We need him. And finally, no, next one, sorry. We can pray about, oh, I didn't put the best one up. That's when we pray that we'll have confidence to, to tell others about Jesus. Because it's in our Bible reading, we, it says that we will confess our faith in Jesus. That means be known as Christians. And we will be scared to do that unless we remember that... Next, this, next slide. Next slide, sorry, back to that one about the, um, the verse, the Bible verse, sorry. No, the, anyway, verse 16 says it, doesn't it? That, no, it doesn't, actually. <laughs> Long day. But we confess, and I'm scared to do that, but Jesus, my high priest, is with me. And so I know that I can be strong and bold because he's standing next to me. Well, we're going to think about prayer now, and Jackie's going to come and help us with some of those prayers that we've been writing down. So I think I'm handing over to Jackie, is that right? Brilliant. But as she comes up, let's pray. Our Father God, we thank you for prayer. We thank you that we can boldly approach your throne in heaven and ask for the desires of our hearts. And we thank you for all that Jesus has done to make that possible all the blood he shed, his own blood on the cross. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, before I start, I might need a, a hand microphone if possible. But I can start while you do that. Um, so I'm really glad to hear that Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father, standing in for us. This is because we know that if we go to the Father with our prayers, thank you, he promises to listen to us and to answer those prayers. But of course, that's only true if we're speaking to him. I would be standing here as a hypocrite if I didn't admit to you that right now, the only time that I talk to my heavenly dad is when I stand here up front or when things get really tough, or when I meet up with a friend specifically for that purpose. I don't think I'm alone. Tim Keller, in his book on prayer, puts it like this. We are so used to being empty that we don't recognize emptiness as such until we start to try to pray. We don't feel it until we begin to read what the Bible and others have said about the greatness and promise of prayer. Then we finally begin to feel lowly and hungry. It's an important to first, sorry, it is an important first step to fellowship with God 
but its pursuit eventually bears fruit because God seeks for us to worship him and because prayer is so rich and wondrous. So what can we do when we feel empty? My own solution was to find a prayer partner. I'd recommend that you find someone to pray with or maybe start a prayer triplet. The second part of my solution was to find someone to read a book of the Bible with. Bible reading always naturally reads in, leads into prayer, and the Psalms are really, really awesome. This seems like the perfect opportunity to plug the prayer meeting that's going to be happening on Wednesday um, up at Prescott Avenue from 7.50 till 9. And there's also quite a few prayer diaries up in the back uh, at the corner by the window. Um, so you can pray for very various missions and missionaries. Um, so I've also got an idea for families. Some of you may have heard of a prayer jar. We're going to have our own today. Um, could I have about five volunteers um, who would like to come up and read? So you need to be able to read. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> I can probably make room for, yeah, one more. Brilliant. Oh, do you want to come as well? We'll have lots of prayers. It is, okay. Right, so the idea of a prayer jar, this is one I prepared earlier, is that you can do this as a family. So um, during your quiet time or your family time, everyone fills out a piece of paper, folds it up, and puts it in the jar, and then you can all take turns to just randomly pick one out and pray it. And the beautiful thing about it as well is that you put your prayers back in the jar, so then you can praise God when your prayers are answered, um, and then you can just rotate them as you go along. Um, and you can be really creative and make the jar really fancy, or you can be very uncreative and just leave it plain <laughs> like I have. And then because we're church family, we, need, we, we needed a prayer jug because it needed to be a bit bigger. So would you like to start? You can pull out. Can you read that okay? Okay, find another one. It's not very easy writing, is it? <laughs> Adults, your handwriting. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> oh, we've got a good one. Dear Father, thank you for the great time we had with the children who came to our church. Please help them remember what they heard about you. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's see if you can find one. Do you want to find some easy ones? Can you read that okay? Yeah. Dear God, thank you for family, friends, and Jesus. Sorry that we do naughty things. Amen. Amen. Thank, thank you, Lord for good health and please be with us all who are suffering um, in health, in body or in mind. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Do you want to read that one? Okay. Dear Lord, please heal my daughter Maya. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. I pray that Jesus would help me um, to be more like him. Amen. Amen. Can you read that okay? Yeah. Thank you that Jesus is always with us, even until we die. Amen. Okay. Yeah. 
I pray for strength for Nero. Amen. Amen. So just read a few more. Thanks, kids. Um, if you'd like to go sit back down. And thank you also to my helpers from uh, this morning. I'll just read a few more if you want to bow your heads. Oh, this one's really awesome. It's got a picture. Um, God, thank you for the sunshine. Amen. Amen. Lord, I pray for your peace and hope for Christians in Ukraine. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We have freedom to meet together this morning to worship you. Amen. Pray for God's blessing on his work, on the work of this church. Amen. Father God, thank you for a new day. Thank you that your mercies are new every day. Thank you for loving us. Amen. Heavenly Father, um, pray for Evan to be healed from his illness. Amen. That's, yeah, that's my prayers. Thank you. Um, and now we can uh, move to the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Jackie, and thank you, children, for helping us with our prayers. Well, we're going to come to our time of the Lord's Supper now, and uh, it's good, actually, to remember what we're doing, isn't it, when we come to the Lord's Supper, particularly as we've been thinking about our great high priest. In some churches, uh, there's lots of robes and things. Uh, and we don't do that here. Uh, we're simply wanting to make sure all of our focus is on the Lord Jesus, our great high priest. And as we come to the Lord's table now, what we're doing is we're remembering his death on the cross and his resurrection so that our sin could be forgiven. It's a wonderful thing to be able to do that, isn't it? And so as we come, perhaps some of those, those of us that are older, we come and we eat a bit of bread that represents Christ's body on the cross. And we drink a little bit of wine and that represents his blood that was shed for us on the cross. And as we take in those things, as we eat and as we drink... As the, uh, the liturgy puts it, we feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And wonderfully, the Lord Jesus promised that as we do that, he is present with us. Not, not magically in the bread and the wine, but wonderfully spiritually in us. Because his Holy Spirit lives within those of us who love him and trust him. So it's a wonderful thing to remember as we come to the Lord's Supper. And the other thing that's wonderful is it's all because of what the Lord Jesus did. And the only thing that we are called to do is to turn away from our sin and to ask God's forgiveness. And we're going to do that now as we come to our confession. We're going to bring our confession to him. And uh, we've got a picture of uh, our confession prayer there. And we're reminded in 1 John 1 verse 9 uh, that if we confess our sins to him, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins 
and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And he does that by sending his Holy Spirit to be living within us. So I'm going to read some words from the confession. And uh, if you wish to, please would you join with me in saying the words in bold. God our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins, for turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For behaving just as we wish, without thinking of you. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For failing you by what we do and think and say. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world about us. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For living as if we were ashamed to belong to your Son. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. Loving Father, we rejoice that you pardon and forgive all those who truly repent and sincerely believe your holy gospel. Grant us true repentance and your Holy Spirit so that we may live godly, righteous and holy lives and that we may come at the last to your eternal glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord God, who has at this time taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending to them the light of your Holy Spirit, grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things and forevermore to rejoice in his holy comfort through the merits of Christ Jesus our Saviour, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I'm going to move. I'm going to change microphone and move over to the Lord's table. And Dan's going to move the furniture around uh, to help us to get ready as we come to share together in the Lord's Supper. Hear the words of comfort. Our Saviour Jesus Christ says to all who truly turn to him, Come to me, all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in your tender mercy gave your only Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a perfect, a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. He instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. Hear us, merciful Father, we humbly pray. And grant that we, receiving these gifts of your creation, 
this bread and this wine, according to your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. And so as we come entirely unworthy to receive the Lord's Supper on our own merits, we pray this prayer. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Well, we welcome everybody to join us at the Lord's Supper here. If you know and love the Lord Jesus and are in a right relationship with him, if you're a visitor and it's your normal custom to receive the Lord's Supper, then do feel welcome to join with us. If you would prefer to come uh, just for prayer but not to receive the Lord's Supper, then just leave your hands by your side and I'll be very pleased to pray with you. Um, we're going to have two stations. If you're in the sort of centre part of the church, if you come up to the rail, uh, and if you need uh, gluten-free wafer and uh, alcohol-free wine, come to the rail. Uh, otherwise, if, if there's also a station over on the right, and you could uh, come over to there and receive communion there too. Uh, please do come as the stewards direct you. And if the chalice assistants could come and join me at the front, please.
draw near with faith.
please take a seat. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has gone through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we possess, profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness. Yet we have one who has been tempted in every way just as we are, yet was without sin. So let's pray together the prayer after communion. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Amen. Well, we have uh, one or two notices, uh, items of church family news uh, to share with you. Firstly, it's parish prayer this week on Wednesday up at the Prescott Avenue Centre, so our grow groups on the whole won't be meeting this week. And uh, we do encourage everybody to come and to pray. And uh, even if you can't come to be with us, use the uh, prayer news that's been circulated uh, and pray at home. But it's great if we can get together for that. Um, also, just to let you know, there's a series of talks that Dan is doing. They're part way through, and he's uploading those onto the website about the Bible and why we can trust the Bible. Uh, it's a question that people often ask. You base, base all that you say on the Bible. How can we know it's true? So Dan's been addressing those questions. Um, there's going to be some men's ministry uh, starting up soon, and one of the things that's going to happen is a group of men are going to Cape and Ray in the Lake District for the first weekend in September. And uh, Peter tells me that there are two places left in our party, if, any, if a couple more men would like to join. So do have a word afterwards with Peter Preston if you would like to join with that. Uh, now last week, Hive met, I think Sarah, where is Sarah? Come up, yeah. Sarah's just going to share with us a little bit about what happened at Hive last week. Thank you. Um, yeah, so a number of us went off to Red Hill Christian Centre and we had a great time. Thank you for those of you who prayed for us. Um, we specifically looked at Psalm 23 and how it's Jesus who is our good shepherd and how he restores our soul and how he knows us intimately, how he draws us in and comforts us. And we had time to then respond and have um, t yeah, time with God. Um, so it was a really great, great time. Um, highly recommend any men if you take up the two places to go but also if there's anybody who just thinks actually it would be lovely to have some time out, the Red Hill Centre do do, um, you can go for a day, so you can go and use the grounds or you can hire a room um, so whether there's just one or two of you who want to go or by yourself it really is a, a wonderful place um, but Obviously, we don't have to go away to spend time with God, and we've heard today we can come to God and we can pray to him. Um, one of the things that we did to help with our time of responding is we had a booklet which just had some ideas, different ways of, um, and suggestions of praying through scripture, um, just to give some structure. If there's times in, when you come to prayer and think, I don't know what to do, um, there are some of those left. So they're at the back. If you would like to take one of those, please do. Um, but once again, thank you for praying for us. Um, so I've got another notice, uh, unrelated to Hive this time, but um, you probably know that Jesus was accused of being a glutton and a drunkard when he was walking around on earth. Um, and that was because he loved to sit down and eat a meal with people. He loved to be a guest in people's houses, to let them serve him with food, and he would then serve them with his words. And um, we're going to do something kind of similar. Um, on the 25th of June, we're going to have a shared lunch at home. And the shared lunch at home hopefully does what it says on the tin. We eat together in our homes. And the way we're going to do, the way we do it is we sign up to be either a host of people or a guest of people. And it's really important to remember that Jesus was always the guest. So it's just as hospitable to be a guest as it is to be a host. I have some forms 
um, that you can come and gra grab from me afterwards, which uh, you can use to sign up to be either a host or a guest of people um, on that Sunday. And it would be just so wonderful, wouldn't it, to have everybody in the church family going somewhere for lunch or hosting someone for lunch on that day. It is a shared lunch at home, so if you're considering hosting, don't panic. You're not going to have to feed 20 people all by yourself. It's a shared lunch. You choose how many people you can host, and hopefully your guests will offer to bring some drinks or some crisps or some, you know, some pudding, something like that. It's, we're all in it together. So do come and grab a form from me afterwards if you'd like to sign up for a go as a, I was about to say a ghost, as a host or a guest. And... <laughs> Um, at the end of this week, hopefully, we'll have a sign-up online as well. So there's a paper version or an online version at the end of this week, paper version today. Thank you. That's exciting, isn't it? And uh, great to look forward to that. It's, it's, it's about being family. You know, the Hive um, women were out as church family, church family lunch, some of the men of our church family going away together. What a joy it is to be part of the family of God, which we all are if we know him and love him and trust him uh, because of his Holy Spirit. And uh, that gives us such a great hope, doesn't it? In fact, it's a great joy to be part of the fam church family today. But one day, as we sing in our last song, there's going to be unspeakable joy. The joy will be so incredible that we won't be able to put it into words. But in a sense, we won't need to put it into words because we'll just be there in the presence of God all the time. That's our hope. So let's uh, stand and sing as the music begins. There is a hope that burns within my heart.
Our gracious Father, we thank you for that prospect, that hope that we long for so much of being with you all the time, where the joy will be unspeakable because there will be no barrier between us and you. And Father, between now and then, we do pray that you would walk before us by your Holy Spirit, enabling us, helping us, guiding us, supporting us when times are hard, helping us in our prayer and helping us as we read the Bible to understand your word to us. Father, please, by your Spirit, go before us this week that we might know the joy of walking with the Lord Jesus. And we pray in his precious name and for his glory. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon each and every one of you, now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.